Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving on to our next session. Our next speaker leads the country hat from Nepa, India. Nepa is a Stockholm headquartered leading consumer science firm working on the crossroads of tech, consulting, and research. Please join me in welcoming Aisha Nagar, Managing Director, Nepa India Private Limited. She will be talking about content in its element. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much, Kayati, for the introduction. Just doing a check, I'm audible and visible. Absolutely. Loud and clear. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking at the Content Jam today. Um, and, you know, just adding on to the amazing start that has already begun with uh, the session prior. On the topic of the moment, the theme of the moment, uh, something that is definitely changing our lives and businesses alike, uh, governing different themes, uh, especially in the times uh, and in the year in which the content consumption has been on a hyperdrive. Uh, to be honest, uh, I was wondering what to really talk about today and what could I possibly talk new when it comes to content marketing uh, with the amount of exposure on the topic, on content itself. And see, this is exactly what uh, content storming really leads to, which is the newness. Uh, what do we really say? However, I have tried that, you know, uh, for the next 10 minutes, uh, we'll focus on the core elements that really make up this compound called content and look at some of the trends uh, you know, in which uh, the content is going to be shaped in the future and also how possibly content would shape us. So with that, I'll just share my screen. OK, so I have a go and the screen is visible to everybody. Uh, with that, we get into uh, content in its element for the next 10 minutes, guys. Uh, before uh, getting into all the elements that I would be talking about, let's just do a very quick introduction. Uh, Khyati already mentioned, but I would definitely do the due of introducing NEPA. Uh, we are in the business of making sense of consumers and the markets, uh, not just in content, but in a lot of industries and beyond. Now, content brings with it a lot of attributes, a lot of elements, so to say. But for today, given the kind of time that we have in hand, we'll focus on three elements the first one being the rise of the creative entrepreneur that the content industry has brought in focus the second one being uh, a lot was spoken in the panel the context and the consumer and so to say then the connect between content the last one is definitely going to be the changing face of content marketing now, while working at NEPA with a lot of OTT players, we have not been able to ignore the growing clout of UGC and the user-generated content. The kind of hyperdrive the sector has had and the kind of shape it's taking, it's, it's just brilliant. In the words of Hans uh, Mirawik, I would say, in time, almost all humans may work to amuse other humans, while the bots run competitive primary industries like food production and manufacturing. Now that hits hard, but it definitely strikes a chord back home. We are, so to say, living in the world and the times of a passion economy. And we'll touch upon what a passion economy really means. If I talk about certain factoids and facts that we saw when we asked consumers what they consume the most, this was just at the onset of lockdown. Look at the brands that you see in the word cloud. But I don't want to focus too much on the recall brand, so to say, which are basically a parallel replacing consumables. But it was not just that the content time has increased. It's not just that the content consumption has increased, also, so to say. But entertainment and content has moved beyond just watching. We are seeing that it's watch, create, and move on the go. It's passive consumption to active consumption, where we are seeing the transition being made where consumers want to create content and sort of bring the human connection or the real human scenario or the empathy factor when it comes to uh, interactions with content. This leads to the emergence of three broad themes in the rise of entrepreneurship very broadly connected to creativity. The first one is the drive on consuming and creative in parallel. Passion economy is a beautiful concept. If you haven't already read about it, you definitely must touch upon. Now, this is a you know, a stage where non-producers are interacting with non-consumers and exchanging goods. And when I say exchanging goods, virtual goods. And when I say virtual goods, content. And what this is leading to is into the rise of professions beyond usual. 
professions in which the individuals are able to bank upon intellect, art, lifestyle, and also monetize the same. Thus, as much as we have been talking at the start of the year about OTT and the rise of 50 plus OTT content players, UGC is definitely going to be the way content future or content marketing future is shaping up. This brings me closely to the art of making content the king with context. Before we go into how content and context is related, and if we were to choose between the two, which one would the marketer prefer or which one the marketer would sort of like prioritize? The answer is uh, you really can't choose. Without the context, content does not really uh, do, you know, the you don't get the valuable, the value monetized benefit or the value monetized objective, so to say, out of it. Now, content is the material or the matter or the medium which is which the audience is exposed to. And the context is within the works and in within the positioning, so to say, the intent to create content. Thus, uh, as a marketer and also as an agency brand, the context connects is very, very dear when it comes to the future facets of content marketing. It can very easily lead into uh, you know, a sort of an imbalance between the campaign mentality versus the contextual nature of the problem. Uh, what it does is it adds up a burden on the consumer or the viewer to understand and sort of segregate between what is relevant and what is not. So the campaign mentality and the contextual nature of the problem is something uh, which a careful goal and persona directed behavior analysis can solve. Now, I definitely said a heavy word there, but what it means is understanding what the consumer relevance is, understanding what it really means for the consumer. Of course, the reach and you know content first strategy works really well, uh, depending upon a large brand or a smaller brand. But if we do not really direct the content aligned with the goal and the personas that we're talking about, it could definitely, uh, you know, mark the complete uh, content strategy, so to say. This also uh, ties in beautifully how the lines of B2B and B2C in content marketing and the future ahead are sort of blurring. We are living in a phase where uh, it's all coming together. When we do a lot of part to purchase work and consumer journeys at NEPA, we see how beautifully and so and how uh, how critical uh, you know the role of a b2b marketing plot is uh, with respect to say a social media campaign the ever increasing complexities of purchase decisions the touch points that are seen as traditionally b2c they continue to be even more critical in b2b in today's uh, content marketing scenario specifically in the digital world where the attention span is the attention span is like 7 to 10 seconds that we're talking about it just becomes extremely important to link the two. The second one uh, being making each piece of content that you create more effective. With distribution of content, there is a certain degree of value exchange attached. And all in its new facets, what content marketing says is, let's stay away from no random act of content creation. Having a context and then focusing on effectiveness over quantity is definitely the theme for the future. The last one, I have to talk about the customer journey mapping uh, coming from the research world. Decoding the path to purchase and then tying it back to the content strategy is the third piece that the marketers and agencies are focusing today and continue to focus on in the future years uh, to nail the balance between B2B and B2C themes. If I have to combine all the one, two, and three of content elements together, then the mantra or the recipe is all about connected stories and scenarios, so to say. We are building a lot in terms of both connected stories uh, and contextual content at NEPA. Do give us a shout and connect with the team. That was all that I had for, I think, a little less than 10 minutes today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esha. That was wonderful. And uh, we'd love to hear more about it. And if you want to hear more about it, then don't forget to get in touch with Aisha. I'm sure she's available on LinkedIn. And you can get in touch with her. She's already given you her contact details. Thank you for spending this time and letting us know so much about the research that goes behind it, the data that we so uh, you know importantly need when we are driving content. So thank you, Aisha, one more time. Thank you so much, Kayati. Thanks, Michelle.